What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and in this video we're going to be talking about LED bulbs. And I want to thank you Auto One for sponsoring this video. They actually sent me two sets of LED bulbs. I only have one in my hand because I can only hold one, but the other reason is because the other ones I've already installed and have been testing out for months. So in this video I want to cover how to properly install LED bulbs and upgrade from halogen to LED, how you know that a quality bulb is actually a quality bulb and it's not just branded or marketed as quality and really well it's not so great and how do you properly install them in different types of headlight assemblies and i'm going to cover fog lights too but that's not that big of an issue mostly headlight assemblies is what's going to get people a little confused when it comes to upgrading to led bulbs so because this video is about bulbs let's unbox these and then i'll show you an unboxing of the other bulbs that i actually already installed so as you can see, they're very well packaged right off the bat. It's important that they have this uh, styrofoam or rubber sometimes. Uh, just depends on the brand, obviously. Uh, but styrofoam is best because it's cushioned and soft. That way, it protects the bulb itself. Now, different ones will have different features, different builds, different design. Obviously, it also depends on the type of bulb. This happens to be an H8, 9, and 11 bulb. So, yes, LED bulbs do somewhat fit multiple types of assemblies or type of bulbs. As you can see right here, this is the other set that they sent me. They are somewhat similar. It's just that they are a little bit bigger, beefier, I guess you could say. But that's because they have a double row of LEDs. And no, that does not mean high and low beam. Sometimes it does. On these particular ones, it does not. It's just literally double LEDs. Double the light, double the brightness, but also double the heat. And that's why it needs to be bigger. It has a heat sink on it and a fan, a more powerful fan. These ones that I'm holding in my hand right now, as you can see, they do have a fan, but it's not as beefy as the other ones. But that doesn't mean they're any worse. So you have to know what you're installing them in. So let's cover bulbs first. What's a quality LED bulb? Well, a quality LED bulb is going to simulate a halogen perfectly. As you can see, these bulbs right here, the LEDs themselves, the little LED chips, are in the center of the bulb, so or the whole assembly, I should say. What that simulates is the filament of a halogen bulb. They are at the same height from the mounting surface as the filament of a halogen, and they are at the same depth compared to the center of the bulb. If you draw a line, which would be your center axis point, well, these need to be at the same or almost the same depth compared to the halogen. So although the halogen is going to be perfectly centered, and these will never because, well, they're sitting on each side of the center, but they're pretty close. And that's what's important. If you see a bulb that looks like this, which has four sides, I've seen them with three, I've seen them with multiple sides. I've seen them with two sides, but they're thicker. If you see anything like this, that is not going to work properly. Well, they, they will light up and they'll be bright, but they're not going to shine where you want them to because they cannot reflect off of the reflector or through the projector. And we'll get to that in a minute. But basically, if it doesn't look like this right here, I'm going to tell you right now, don't waste your money on it. It is not good. I have actually tried them before and well, believe it or not, I kind of made them work without blinding anyone but if you just put those in you will blind everyone and you will get only probably about a third to half of the light output that they can actually put out because it just can't reflect properly it's not built like the halogen or like a quality led and the headlight just doesn't know where to put the light basically is what it comes down to it's just going in all directions and now that we've covered for the most part what is a good bulb and what is a bad bulb. Well, after that, when it comes to deciding which brand you should buy, just do your research and uh, make sure it's something quality, make sure that the reviews are good and it's going to last. Now, from experience, I can tell you these Auto One bulbs are great. I'm, I'm actually impressed with the build quality, the performance, the design. It's a very compact design. Even with the other bigger ones, it's pretty compact for what they can provide. So link to these are, is going to be in the description for sure so check that out <sighs> bye bye ant anyway so now that we've talked about these let's talk about why they have to be like this i know i briefly mentioned it already but i need to explain it 
And when it comes to that, we need to understand the types of headlight assemblies. There are reflector types and projector types. Now, there are also refractor types, which you can see in this picture is the old school, old style headlight where it's just a flat lens behind it with usually a glass cover on the outside. But in more recent years of the refractor style, which I mean, still was like 20 years ago, they would uh, make it out of plastic. But either way, the light gets filtered through the outside of it, not from the inside and passing through a clear lens. The lens is what provides the beam pattern. But we're not going to focus on those because those are old. Most cars past like the early 2000s don't even have those anymore. So we're going to ignore those, get those out of the equation. We're going to talk about reflector and projector. So those are the two main styles you're going to see out on the road nowadays. The headlights you saw on my F-150 are aftermarket upgraded headlights. Stock, it just had reflector headlights. As you can see on my GS300, all lights are reflector style lights. Low beams, high beams, fog lights, they're all reflector. Projectors are either going to be on newer cars, fancier models, or if you do a retrofit like I did on my Corolla, video about that in the description by the way if you're interested. Here's a better representation as to why it has to be the way it is. This right here is the LED bulb out of my high beams. And we're gonna talk about the haziness in a minute. We'll, we'll get there. But as you can see, it's sitting perfectly flat. Well, flat as in upright, not at an angle. And the light is reflecting sideways, which is simulating the light emittance of a halogen. When you reflect it, if this bulb was parallel to the ground, not perpendicular, it would be reflecting up and down. And think about this as a mirror. That's what that reflector is, it's a mirror. So as you can see in this diagram, in the mirror, it reflects in the opposite direction that it's being pointed at. So if this is pointing the light up, it's now gonna reflect it down, which is great, that's fine. But when you reflect it down here, it's gonna go straight up. And that is exactly when you start having issues with blinding everyone and not getting your proper light output. So it's important that the light gets emitted in the right direction and from the proper source, which is usually the center of the headlight or the center of the reflector, not necessarily the headlight, because as you can see, the assembly can have different shapes, but the reflector is always going to be perfectly shaped to accept said bulb. These dots, by the way, fun fact, are always the center point of your headlights. As you can see, this one right here, it's hard to see on camera, this one right here. So when it comes to reflector headlights, that's pretty much it. You have to make sure you have the right bulb and that you're positioning it properly. And it's very easy to see how it's positioned in a reflector. In a, in a low beam, well, that, this was a high beam and it's easy to see here. In a low beam, sometimes it's not as easy, but if you peek around right there, you can kind of see the bulb, so you can figure that out. Let's uh, let's address the haziness now, because this is, well, not a good thing. It's a big issue, actually. Just as a quick reference, this is what headlights are supposed to look like when they are at their optimal performance, basically. A clear, perfectly transparent lens to let that light pass through all the way. When you are trying to send light through this hazy lens, doesn't matter what bulb you have, you can have three bulbs in there, you will get significantly diminished output. Because not only does the light start shining in a bunch of different directions, but it's almost like, and this is gonna be an exaggeration, trying to shine a flashlight through a piece of paper. It's gonna produce light, but it's going to be very weak and very spread out and just inefficient altogether. So having hazy headlights like this is actually a big issue and will significantly reduce the performance of your light output. And there are multiple fixes for this. Obviously you can replace your headlights, which is great if they're affordable, but in the case of this GS, they are actually very expensive if you didn't know. And I'm pretty sure that's why you see most GSs with hazy headlights, unless they are a cheaper aftermarket option or someone wants to pay a lot of money for them. But I do have a video that describes in detail how I recommend buffing and polishing headlights so you can restore them. Usually if it's just a quick restoration, something that looks like this, you can easily bring this back to life with a little buffing pad on a drill. 
if you need to really sand it down, I recommend using some wet sandpaper. Start at 1,000 grit and go up one step up to about 3,000, 4,000 if you're really, you know, if you have time. But other than that, just uh, give it a quick buff and then it's very important that you protect them. When you buff it and, well, when it starts looking like this, that means it has lost its UV protective layer, which is a coating, kind of like a clear coat, but it's not really a clear coat, for the lens, the plastic lens, to prevent it from getting hazy. So. I'm not saying that you should be using this Meguiar stuff, but it's good stuff. So, you know, pick your own. So I put the camera down and quickly buffed the passenger side headlights. And while well, you can see the difference, this is exactly what I was talking about. Look at the difference in potential light output that is lost just because of the haziness. I can't even see the reflector on the driver's side. That's how hazy it is. But I can see every line, every curve of the reflector on the passenger side, so huge difference. Very important to have clear lenses on your headlights. So now that I buffed the headlights, I did this side also. As you can see, they are nice and clear now. I mean, they're not gonna be brand new, but that's what you get from a quick buff. And uh, of course, I'm gonna coat them later with some of this headlight coating. But now that we've covered the importance of everything you need to know about reflector headlights, so keep in mind, reflectors are the ones where you have a clear lens, there's nothing happening there, you can see the bulb because it's a clear lens, and the reflector is just that mirror that sits on the backside reflecting the light. A lot of fog lights are gonna be reflectors, sometimes you'll see projectors, but most of the time it'll be reflectors, and uh, even lower trim model vehicles nowadays will come with reflectors instead of projectors. Let's move over to projector headlights. But we're not going to use this as an example. We're going to use my Corolla because you can actually see the projector a little bit better. But we'll come back to the truck in a little bit. Hmm. There we go. That's obviously not supposed to happen, but we'll pretend it didn't. So uh, here's a projector. This is what I was talking about when I retrofitted the projectors. These were initially reflector housings, as you can see right here. I know it's missing a bulb, but this is what the, re the uh, reflector looks like. It's just a bunch of little patterns or, or squares that are coated with this chrome reflective coating, which, well, like I said, reflects the light in the right angles. So as you can see, each of these has a slightly different angle in order to provide the best light output for you. When it comes to projectors, however, there is a, uh, a housing back there. Oh, there's the inside of it. If you look carefully in there, you can see my bulb. Okay, so there it is in the center. And then, if you look around it, there's gonna be almost like a cone-shaped mirror. You can see this cone-shaped mirror, and that's the reflector. So, projector headlights also have reflectors, but they're a little bit different. As you can see, it's not cut. It's not divided into a bunch of different squares and rectangles and cuts. It's just literally round. It's like a cup. It's like putting aluminum foil on the bottom of a bowl, basically. That's all it is. And if you look at the center of the screen right here, you can see this divider. This is just a, a metal flap, basically, that can open up when you activate your high beams. I disabled that feature, but most projectors have this. And what reflects the light in the end is basically just well it goes through this lens that almost looks like a projector lens and that's why they're called what they're called it's a magnifying glass kind of for the light that's being put out so actually saying that projector headlights are brighter is not really the right term because they're not any brighter if you put the same bulb it's going to put out the same amount of light but projector headlights can actually focus the beam a lot better and they're more precise so having said that let me show you a before and after with the led bulbs that i installed in my dad's car actually and he has projector headlights so we're going to take out the halogens and i'll show you a before and after of the entire procedure basically and it's not going to change the beam pattern but it'll definitely change the light output and it's going to provide a lot better nighttime driving experience for him and uh, he's actually been driving on them for months now and loves them so you can see this is a great representation here where the bulb is sitting perpendicular to the ground so it's upright 
and it's lighting up both sides, the reflector actually needs the same thing to happen. So the bulb needs to sit upright in the reflector and that's why it's a little trickier to install because it's more difficult to see. You have to kind of look at it from the backside, figure out in which direction you're putting it in and then if it's a twist type you can twist it and kind of estimate how far you went and make sure that it's still upright. Some have adjustments to them which is great, I love those, but you have to make sure you adjust them properly and in this case for example they don't actually twist in, they just go in and then you have a little spring that goes on top. So you can actually very easily make sure that you put them in the right way. If you put in the bulb of a projector headlight in the wrong way, you're not going to actually shine the light in a different direction because there's that piece of, of metal in there usually or sometimes aluminum, but it's basically kind of like a shield protecting it from going up towards other oncoming traffic. It's always gonna shine down but it's not going to shine the full output of the light bulb. That's the point here. So unlike a reflector where it's wide open and you have to make sure you put it in the right way, otherwise it's gonna go all over the place. That doesn't really happen with a projector, so it's a little bit more foolproof. But if you install your bulb wrong, you're just not gonna get the light output that you were, well, hoping for or expecting. And then you're gonna be upset at the bulb or at the headlights, and it's actually not that. It's just the fact that you didn't install them right, so it can't shine properly. So I hope this cleared up some confusion about upgrading to LED headlight bulbs and installing them. And basically, I know I said I'd go over the fog lights, but the same goes for the fog lights. If they're projector fog lights, follow what I said for the projectors. If they're reflector fog lights, just make sure they're aimed properly and you should be good to go. Anytime you do anything with the headlights, it's a good idea to check the alignment of them. Yes, you can align headlights if you didn't know. They do have adjusters on the back side or on the top sometimes. They're either a Phillips head, a ratchet, or uh, sometimes they take special tools like this F-150, but it's rare. Most of them will just take a common screwdriver or wrench or ratchet, whatever you have, and then you can aim the beam up and down and sometimes side to side. So it's very helpful. Same goes for fog lights. You don't wanna be pointing it up at the sky or straight down at the ground. I've seen a lot of cars that are driving around at night with high beams on because they can't see anything, but their headlights are clearly pointing like 10 feet in front of them. So that's not really gonna help you no matter what bulb you put in there and no matter how perfectly you install it or how good the bulb is, it's literally not gonna shine right. So having said that, I hope this video helped you out. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have anything you wanna say, leave it down in the comment section and I'm gonna try and answer to the best of my ability. I wanna give another shout out to Auto One. Thank you for sponsoring this video and for sending me two different sets of headlight bulbs. Like I said, the ones that I installed in my dad's car are performing amazing. He loves them, he drives on them every day. I'm gonna be installing the second set of headlights right away in my uh, brother-in-law's car actually, who has been driving around for a long time on halogen bulbs. I showed him what it was like to have LEDs and he's like, I need to have them because I, I just, I think they're a great product, honestly. So again, link down in the description and make sure that you think about and apply any or all the tips that I just gave you in this video. So having said that, I'll see you in the next one.